Hi, it's Miranda, and I'm awake before everybody, and I've been awake for a while, and I would be sad right now, but as you see, I'm very, very smiley, and the reason I'm very smiley is because I was able to emulate something that I have not been able to see with my own eyes for at least, I want to say 30 years. My family as well. Maybe they will lose their minds as they watch this. Wait till you see, guys. I've only seen the main menu so far. And I'm already losing my mind. <laughs> I think they already, either that or they're like, wait a second. There were so many of these, by the way. These were from the Apple II. And we had an Apple II C, so we didn't have it in color even. We had this in like green and black. The thing is, when I first looked this up years ago to find out about it, basically, I discovered there are so many of these, like it goes in the 20s, that I didn't know which one I wanted. This is number 14, guys. We had so many floppies for this cartoon maker situation right here. We made so many comic strips with this, and it's it's such a trudge because we weren't using a mouse. We were using just there's probably a mouse support. Yeah, I see. There's like a joypad thing there, but letter from the editor? No, we're gonna go to Funhouse Caper. We never went to letter from the editor. Whenever we did, it was like, oops. I'm about to. Do I haven't seen this. I want to say it's been 30 years. Aside from a, an image on online here or there that I've been able to, to find over the years, but I haven't emulated it until now. Twist a plot. Do you remember? I remember this. You are about to enter Twist a plot TM adventure. Do you want instructions? I don't think I need them, but I don't remember, so let's sure. Probably not that hard, but welcome to the fun house. Someone has stolen an object of great value from the owner of the Faburama Funhouse. <laughs> Memories. I don't think you understand. You don't understand. You don't understand. Can you catch the thief? You'll need your best detective skills and the help of your trusty robot, Wes <gasps> Wesley, to catch this caper. This is amazing. This is amazing. You'll find clues in every room of the funhouse. Search carefully. Sometimes you won't notice clues until you've searched the room twice. You are the star of the story and you are in control. When you are given a choice, type the number of your choice and press return. Oh my goodness. Here's your chance to practice. What do you want to do? Read the instructions again or two? Start the stuff. Of course, I want to start the story. Oh my god. This is, the, this is the picture that I would always find. Luke McGillicuddy. This is the picture I would always find when I look this up. And I... And that concludes another episode of Miami Slice. Oh my gosh, I remember all this. The story of two undercover police officers working in a pizza parlor. As you click off the TV, Wesley, your personal robot, rolls in with the mail. There's a letter for you, Wesley beeps. It looks like an invitation. Let's open it, you say. Fun fact, I had to play uh, an android in fifth grade. Come celebrate the opening of the amazing storybook room in my Faburama Funhouse, Saturday at 5 p.m. P.S. Bring Wesley. P.P.S. Come as your favorite storybook character. Signed, George Goodwin. Oh my gosh. Wes, you and I are going to a party at George Goodwin's Faburama Funhouse, you say. The day of the party, you look in your closet. It's a good thing you saved some costumes from Halloween. You get to pick. Oh, yeah. I often did Sherlock Holmes because it was already a mystery, and I was like, magnifying glass. Which costume would you like to wear? I'm going to wear Sherlock Holmes. At the Faberama Funhouse, a voice behind the door asks, Do you know the secret password? No. What is your name? asks the voice. 
Um, I'm just gonna Miranda. Miranda. Your name is Miranda. Is this correct? I think the password is for the other parties. Now that I I, I just remembered. Yes. Because there's, I think, two more mysteries. I remember this first one. Mr. Goodwin, dressed as the Tin Man, lets you in. The fun house is made up of many rooms. Each has a different theme. You go to the sponge room, where the floor, walls, and ceiling are padded with different color sponges. The guests are already there. But who's who? These images. Oh, my gosh. Oh, I remember. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Miranda, help yourself to some lovely, lovely blueberry pies and other tasty treats. Compliment of the Queen of Hearts, says the Tin Man. He whistles a tuneless tune through his teeth. His hands are in his tin pockets, restlessly jingling coins. Blueberry pies and also tasty treats. I'd forgotten how much his... I'd forgotten how much his whistling and his jingling jangles my nerves, you whispered to Wesley. I agree, says Wesley. Why don't you eat something? Some of the guests are eating pie already. Suddenly Wesley stops talking. His eyes glow when they look at the table in the center of the room. On the table is a sparkling key. It's one of the most beautiful objects you've ever seen. It's incredible, you remark to the tin man. Incredible? No, it's a key. I had it specially made to open the door to the amazing storybook room. Oh my goodness, it's made of diamonds and rubies. Cost me $25,000, he adds. 25,000. When I was younger, I didn't even take that into... I don't remember. Just as you approach the table for a closer look, the lights in the room go out. The guests start screaming in the dark. Something's wrong here, you think. Wes whirs. I will lead you to the light switch, Miranda. You grab onto your robot as he heads for the switch and turns it on. Light fills the room. Only you, the Tin Man, and Wes remain. Everybody just ducked out. The key! It's gone! The Tin Man cries. Wesley, sensing another tin object in trouble, goes over to comfort him. Don't worry, we'll track down the thief, you say. How can you and Wesley help? asks the Tin Man. You haven't even met any of the guests yet. My detective skills are pretty good, and Wesley can zap people to gather information about them, you explain. Then he stores the information in memory. We'll give you a demonstration. Wesley chirps and whirs, chirps and whirs, fill the room. There you go. Okay. That's why. It's because it keeps coming every time you do the zap report. Tin Man, real name, George Goodwin, owner of the Fabarama Funhouse, hates pineapples, loves to give parties, sometimes loves to give the same party over and over. Hates pineapples. That's remarkable, the Tin Man says. He pulls out a map of the Funhouse. Use this to find your way around, he says. Okay. Let's go to the sponge room first. This noise. You walk to the center of the room, sinking into the spongy floor. Rapunzel brushes past you as she leaves the room. I find it difficult to roll across this floor, Wesley beeps. I'll just stay here by the door. Oh, Wesley clicks. Look at the light switch. Hmm, you say. Looks like someone smeared blueberry jam on it. What a very ridiculous thing to do. Who would have blueberry jam on their hands, you ask? A very messy human, no doubt, Wesley replies. Blueberry jam on the light switch. Rapunzel walked past. I always found it funny, Rapunzel's hair was short. <laughs> nasty, nasty, ugh. Queen of Hearts and yeah. <laughs> Mechanical snakes, worms, and lizards add to the charm of the room. You see the Queen of Hearts standing in a cloud of flower dust. Uh, Zita Zap. Wesley chirps and whirs, slowly a strip of paper clatters out of his mouth. The Queen of Hearts, real name, Dorothy Daniels, a baker hired by George Goodwin to bake desserts for the party. She has baked for George Goodwin's family and his brother, Sam's family, for years. Okay, Queen of Hearts, she's a baker. Uh, 
turn to continue. Hello, says the queen, pushing a lock of hair out of her eyes. I remember that. She's a bit messy. Care for some blueberry pie? No thanks, you say, although that pineapple upside down cake looks good. Sorry, she says nervously. She wipes the sweat off her face and leaves a smear of pineapple jelly on her forehead. I made it especially for the tin man. Pineapple upside down cake is his favorite. Now immediately. That made it pretty obvious, but we're just going to keep going. Oh, yes. Oh, my gosh. This is so fun. <laughs> you want to zap right there, but you have to wait. The room is lit with an eerie red glow. Mechanical bats swoop and dive through wire spider webs. Welcome, Dracula says. Like my coffin, it's a great place to sleep during the day or night. How interesting, you say nervously. How interesting. I forgot to zap. I gotta do it. As you leave the house of horrors, Nuzzly, as you leave the house of horrors, Wesley nudges you and beeps. Did you notice that his fangs were blue? I guess we're supposed to put that together with the blueberry jam. Z to zap. Zap report. Dracula. Real name, Dagwood Alucard. Oh. Well, look at that. That's Dracula backwards. Night Watchman in House of Horrors room. Alucard thinks George Goodwin is a real pain in the neck. <sighs> Vampire pit. Okay. As you leave the house... Okay, did you notice the same for blue? Okay. Um, all right. I hope this brr, brr, brr is not too loud. I know it's kind of obnoxious. See? That used to make me anxious for some reason. Wesley waits for you in the doorway. The mechanical walls and floor was to scramble my circuits, he explains. In the center of the room stands Rapunzel, combing her hair. A piece of pie is reset, resting in a pretty... A piece of pie is resting on a pretty dessert plate, untouched. Zapper. Oh, that's right. I can't zap. I forgot. She's in the room. That. Why aren't you eating your pie? You ask. I'm so nosy. I'm on a diet, Rapunzel says, powdering her nose. Tell me, how do I look? Neat and tidy, you say admiringly. Admiringly. And that's it. So we're supposed to put that together. She's neat and tidy. Even though she left the sponge room, she's neat and tidy. She wouldn't necessarily leave a smudge. The nastiness, she'd leave a smudge. She had a pineapple upside down cake. George Goodwin does not like pineapples. It's one of the first things we heard about him on his little zap report. So we already know the answer, basically. We're going to pretend we don't. I know. If kids are watching, come on. You know the answer here. You shouldn't be watching me. It's pretty obvious. You and Wesley walked into the moving floor room and promptly fall down. These moving floorboards are murder, Wesley grumbles. Can I help you up? Asks the Mad Hatter. That is, if I can in my weakened condition. Wesley chirps and whirs. Mad Hatter. The Mad Hatter, real name, Peter Velcro. <laughs> Neighbor of George Goodwin. Hates blueberries. Sloppy about everything except his prize marigolds. Goodwin built a third uh, story on his home blocking the sunlight. Velcro's marigolds died without the sunlight. Well, clearly, they're setting him up for being a bad guy. But he doesn't like blueberries. So he wouldn't be smearing blueberries. It's like, this is a, this is a kid's game, don't forget. So they're not going to be like, oh, but they're trying to throw you off. Not really. They're not trying to throw you off. They're setting you up pretty obviously. What's the matter, you ask? I haven't eaten since breakfast and I'm starving, he says. The Queen of Hearts hid her pineapple upside down cake from me. It's not a trick. But we'll go to the last room anyway. <laughs> it 
If you say, this room blows me away, I'm leaving, Leslie warns. Might as well breeze out of here then, you say. There aren't many, any clues in here. Up? I forgot what's up. Oh my goodness, I forgot that there was more. I remember. I think you're like afraid to talk in here. You see a mural of huge snow-capped mountains with tiny mountaineers yodeling back and forth, painted on the wall. The Wicked Witch of the West, wearing white gloves, is daintily eating a blueberry pie. Hi, you say, and the echo lasts for five minutes. Let's zap her. Sounds like I'm zapping her. I can't believe I'm playing this. <laughs> I just got right into it. I remember so much of this, but I forgot little things. Real name Galina Garzov has worked for George Goodwin for six months. Before that, she worked for a company that Goodwin put out of business. Very self-conscious about her hair turning gray. I remember being upset when you didn't see like the character in the picture and you just saw like the room or something. Like I wanted to see her. You see a mural. Okay, I saw this already. She comes up to you and whispers in your ear, Don't say anything out loud. The echo will drive you crazy. Where did you get that pie? Wesley whispers. The queen gave it to me, the wish whispers. I love sweets. So she will give sweets to certain people. I so don't need to do any more of this. I believe I know the answer here. But I'm not going to do the other riddle, the other mysteries. Any clues here, you ask? After some reflection, I'd have to say no. Wesley beeps. <laughs> I should have zapped just so you see that it says there's no one here to zap, but that's pretty much what it says. Hey, George. I remember that boop, boop, boop. Little animation. So fancy. As you walk in the room, the Tin Man floats by. Come on up, Miranda. The air is fine, he says cheerfully. You and Wesley slowly float up to join him. I don't need to zap. Being weightless reminds me of how lightly I've eaten today, the Tin Man says. I'd eat anything except, of course, parsley, potatoes, and anything at all with pineapple in it, just to make sure you remembered. I hate parsley too, Wesley clicks. See? It's pretty obvious. They're just like drilling it into you. <laughs> Told you it's a kid. This is a kid's game. ESP room. You and Wesley walk into the room and stop short. Do you feel it? Wesley asks. There's something strange about this room. Yes, you agree. I hear voices or thoughts. This used to creep me out a little, but I found it interesting. I think the thoughts are from the last person who was in this room, you say. I hear something about upside down, Wesley says. Yes, something was in here before, thinking about something upside down. Look what's underneath us, but talking about something else. No clues here, you say sadly. Why are you smiling? Wesley asks. I'm not. I'm frowning, you say. Oh, it's hard to tell in the upside down room. The robot whirs. Amazing storybook room is for a different story. So I can solve. I think I figured out who stole the I think I figured out who stole the key, you say to Wesley. Let's get the tin man to get everyone together in the sponge room again. And you could do this a couple of times. And eliminate people. Oh, I didn't see Huh. It was you, my dear. It's pretty obvious. The suspect starts to run. You pick up a blueberry pie and throw it. Splat. That happens no matter what. Gooey blueberry pie dripples down Dorothy's chin. This is nonsense, Dor Dorothy Daniels shrieks. If I'm the thief, then where is the key? And you have to know. 
The key, you say, is in the... In the pineapple upside down cake. Is this correct? Yes. Dorothy drops the cake. It crumbles to pieces on the floor and the key falls out. How did you crack this caper? The tin man asks you. You explain, Wes and I found a blueberry stain on the light switch in this room. Only a sloppy, sloppy blueberry pie eater or the baker would leave a clue like that. Dorothy was both. Also, Tin Man, you hate pineapple. Also, Tin Man, you hate pineapple. But the queen claimed she baked a pineapple upside down cake just for you. That also led us to suspect her, Wes continues. But why did you do it, Dorothy? asked the Tin Man. Your brother Sam put me up to it, hisses Dorothy. He was angry with you for stealing his idea for the fun house. He wanted to get even with you, and he paid me to do his dirty work. I'm going to call the police to take Dorothy away, says the tin man, jingling the change in his pocket. But first, I want to make this up to you and the other guests. This is a fun house, after all. Come back for another party next Saturday. Same time, same place. Only to get in, you'll need a password. Yours will be Keystone. And bring Wesley, too. See you next week, and thanks for, your, thanks for a surprise. A surprising evening, you say. Can't talk. The end. I did the fun house. Do you want to go to the next party? No. I'm not going to go to the next party, but I will remember Keystone. <laughs> oh my goodness. I can't believe I just played the fun house caper. <laughs> That's amazing. So I'm going to edit this and put this up because this is crazy nostalgia memories for me. I don't know if anyone else played this in your school, anything like this in your school, but I'm just... All right, I'm gonna go. I'm just, I'm surprised how much of that also came back as it was going. It was like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. 30 years, I swear it's been, it's been about 30 years, if not more. 1986, this was done. And the only reason I'm saying 30 years and not more than that because I'm 42 it's just because we did play it a little bit like we had it at home so we played it after 86 I'm like I didn't just play it the one year I'm still just so surprised I was able to do this because I did it I found it right before I did this video like I didn't have this yesterday I didn't have this day before I found it and I was like it works and then I <laughs> threw it up I might have to do the cartoon maker or something because this is amazing all right, so um, I just wanted to share this. Right? Right, guys? Do you remember this? <laughs> okay, I'm going to go now. Bye. I can't believe it. What is the light? Where's the light from the editor that you have said? Oh. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> this is amazing. This is so amazing.